Hello, Brian Talk Fanboy here, and today I am going to review Hiku Senshi Spielbahn, or as they say in Japan, Hiku Senshi Spielbahn. Now, uh, this is the fifth Metal Hero series, and it consists of 44 episodes. And what's special about uh, this series is that it was made the it first aired in Japan the same year I was born, 1986. So every Middle Hero series I'm going to review from now on will be from after I was born. Now, uh, the first episode introduces a man named Isabirban and a woman named Diana. And, um, well, both Isabirban and Diana, they, uh, came from a planet called Kurin and well uh, they came to earth to protect it from this evil organization called the Wara Dikaku which means Waller Empire. Now uh, the leader uh, well, of uh, Wara is the um, there's a being called Wara, and uh, he, um, well, there's a queen named Yo Pandora who um, speaks for him, and uh, the actress who plays Pandora is the same actress who played um, Hit Hitaria from Tenshi in a Tenshi Man, and Years after Spiroban, she would uh, play Bando the witch Pandora from um, Curious in the Uranger. And of course, Pandora, well, to people of the West, she is known as Rita Repulsa from Mighty Morphin Power Rangers. Now, uh, other members of Wara are. There's a robotic soldier called Desuzero Shogun and this robotic scientist called Dr. Pyo. Now there are three other women in uh, Wara. They're warriors and spies. The leader uh, of um, the sp spy warriors is um, a woman named Riki and uh, the two other women she commands uh, in battle is uh, are Shadow and Kasha. And the foot soldiers of Wara are called um, Kinkurond. Of course, when I first saw Spiraban, I, you know, originally called them Skugs, and I'll explain why in uh, later in the video. Now, uh, Oh, and also, um, Wara, they have a, a woman who's the prisoner, and her name is Helen. And she is the older sister of Superban. And it was also revealed that um, Dr. Payo is also Helen's father meaning that he's also the father of Spiraban and that uh, something happened, you know, to make him go from human to his provided form. Now, uh, well, in the same episode, we are introduced to um, this man named uh, Kujama Tegaru and um, Oh yes, he 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 runs a uh, this uh, company called Edison, which is supposed to gonna be some kind of invention shop where uh, he makes a different kinds of inventions. Oh, and also uh, Daigoro, he has a sister named Mi a younger sister named Miwa. They're both adults, and uh, Miwa she's kind of like a posse towards her older brother sometimes. But uh, anyway, um. I forgot what the, well, the uh, 
two kinds of monsters in Spear of Honor. I forgot what they were called, but um, but the solution was supposed to be um, according to the subtitles I read, was um, new life forms or something like that. No, yes. Well, anyway, um. In the first battle, um, that um, Diana and Subirban had a uh, against Wara, at least their forces. Well, um, the ancient process of um, both of them are is a uh, a call called Kesho, which means crystallization. You now when uh. In the spirit of Ban, he um ancients he well his form is a uh, a black and silver armor and a silver helmet with a black visor and silver mouthpiece and he becomes Jigu Senshi Superban, which means interdimensional no, dimensional warrior Spielban. And Diana, or her henchin form is a uh, white, uh, a white and red armor, and uh, she becomes yeah, a uh, white red armor with a white helmet, black visor, silver mouthpiece, and she becomes the Diana Lady, which means Diana Lady. In a uh, well, after the interview was in this episode or uh, one that came afterwards, but um, well, during most of the series, well, um, Subirban he uses this thing called um, time sleep, which means time slip, and what it does is um, it takes the battle into another location, so you know there won't be any casualties, at least you know. There'll be no innocent bystanders getting hurt. And you know, when I saw that part of the series, I think of Spearban taking, you know, the battle into virtual reality. And I'll explain why later in the video. No um Oh yes, and I forgot to mention that um both Spearban and Diana they reside on this uh, spaceship called the Grand Nazca. And uh, well, I mean, um, I was kind of like uh, surprised at first when I heard the name because, well, Nazca is the um, the name of this area in Peru, which is a uh, the country where I was born in. Of course, I wasn't born in Nazca; I was born in Lima. But you know, Nazca is still part of Peru. So anyway, yes, the Grand Nazca can also um turn into a gigantic uh, cannon and. Spearbun used it to, uh, I guess, you know, the big vehicles. Oh, and also, uh, Spearbun, he has a weapon. I don't know what, called the Razor Sniper. And Diana had the, um, Ready Sniper. Oh, and, uh, Spearbun, he, um, also has this, uh, Double edged sword called the uh, Dwin Bredo. And his final his finishing move with it is called the um Yes, the Arc Impulse, which means Arc Impulse. And uh that's how he defeats um all the monsters made by Wara throughout the entire series. Now in the next episode we learned um, more about um, Sibirban and Diana's mission, and it was that um, when they were children, the Wara Tekuku attacked their home planet of Kurin, and well, many ships were uh, carrying many survivors. However. Um, those ships didn't have enough food and water for everybody. And so, um, 
the mother of Spirit, whose name is the uh, yeah, Anna, and the mother of Diana, whose name is Marie, well, uh, they both convince um, the one in charge to uh, let Spirban and Diana enter the Grand Nazca uh, to uh, go to Earth and um, yes and knowing how long it will take to get there well um, so the one in charge agreed to let them go and um, well Diana and Spearman as children they entered the Grand Nazca and um, flew on the way to Earth of course because of how long it would take well um, they couldn't hold enough for um, Put in water, you know, like uh, normal people. So, what they did is was uh, well, uh, they went into uh, some kind of hibernation, and yes, it will take a so they can uh, make it to Earth without food and wa water, you know, for that. For the amount of years uh, that it takes, and during that time, well, um, even though they were in a, oh yes, and it since been animation, they um, they did grow, as well, and also during, also memory, I mean, uh, information about Earth was downloaded into their minds. And then, you know, when the, both Subirban and Diana woke up, they were now adults. And they arrived on Earth to uh, third dimension. Now, in the same episode, Subirban also met uh, Daigoro and... Uh, oh yes, and uh, well, when he first introduced himself to Daigoro, Suspiraban, he um, told him that his name is Yo Yusuke. That was the name he uses on uh, on Earth as a civilian. In uh, in the next episode, well, uh, Dagoro he uh, found a uh, experiment with Diana and well. Uh, Spirit introduced uh, Diana to Daigoro and, you know, told him that Diana is somebody he works with. Uh, also, um, in that episode, well, um, it was, uh, Ping was Pintor who decided, who ordered um, Dr. Bayo to uh, turn Heron into a uh, robotic warrior and well Dr. Boy was reluctant at first meaning that he has some humanity in him but well because of you know his position he decided to go through with it anyway and so um, he uses his technology and Heron she became a um, this Red robotic warrior called Herubaira. And yes. Well, uh, she was a. Uh, as Herubaira, she was programmed to fight Superban. And, um. Yes, uh, she fought Superban. Of course, um. Something happened, meaning that, um. Which resulted her to turn back into Heron, but it was uh, where Superior Ban couldn't see. And so, um, however, um, it turns out that uh, Pandora has a uh, device that could um, 
use um she could use to uh turn a heron into a heron fire anytime she wants. And um now during I don't know how many episodes but many episodes that um heron would uh try to, you know, um stay away from Superman as far as possible because she was afraid that as Herobira, she might end up killing her own brother and well, she doesn't want to do that. Now, um, oh yes, um, she, in one episode, Diana eventually made up with Heren and, um, well, she begged Heren to, um, go to see Spirit Band, but Heron didn't want to because, you know, of her fear. No. Episodes later, um, see, uh, oh yes, um, Dr. Fayo has, uh, well, um, well, oh yeah, yes, uh, he, um, after many battles with um, Heron fighting, um, oh yes, um, the spirit instead of fire, well, uh, Dr. Bayon, he begged Oye Pandora to um, just let her uh, live in peace and he would um, do his part to help defeat Spirit Bond. So, Pandora, she granted a Dr. Fire's request. Oh, I forgot to mention that um, one of the episodes had the flashback explaining um, how Dr. Fire came to be and, well, um, when Wara was attacking uh, Green, well, um, the forces kidnapped both. Well, Doctor Fire was once a, a man named Ben Hakase, and he. See, uh, oh yes, uh, he was kidnapped along with Heron, who was still a child at the time. And. And years afterwards. He, uh, see, oh yes, uh, he went to some kind of surgery that turned him into Dr. Pyle. No. Eventually, um, Dr. Pyle had a, um, a plan to turn himself into some kind of monster and, um, so he can defeat his beer bond. And they well, Heron, she found out about it and when up with the battle between um Superior Bond and the Monster came, well Hera I mean Heron she arrived and then um well told Superior Bond that that's their father and um well she See. Oh yes, um so during a battle, um well the monster he was defeated but not killed. I don't know if it was in this episode or another one, but um or well, Doctor Fire had became has now resorted to being a, like um a, a brain with eyes and a stem. Oh, and also, um, Superior finally, well, Pandora told her that she had, um, well, she used that her device to, um, turn her into Herobira, and she was, um, yeah, Superior was surprised, but then, um, eventually the battle was over, and, uh, well, now Superior knows the truth about 
his sister and father. Let me see him. Episodes later, um, let's see what happened. Um, well, after learning the truth, well, um, Superior has to make a decision on how do you know deal with his family being part of Wara and um, let's see um. Oh yes um. Well, um, episodes later, um, well, oh yes, now I remember, um, it's revealed that in the future, um, I think it was the 22nd century, there was this homeless man who was, well, he made this talking gerbil, and, um, the gerbil told him that, um, the reason he's poor was because of spirit bond, and then he traveled back in time to the year 1986, and uh, he, uh, yes, uh, met up with Pandora, and, um, and then his true form was revealed, and uh, there's uh, his name is actually, um, Kyojin Kote. No one. Um, eventually, um, Dr. Bio, he, um, had plans to let Heron escape, and she did. And, um, afterwards, um, as she escaped, she was, um, See, um, oh, yeah, she met up with Superban and, um, uh, well, um, uh, oh, yes, um, uh, she uh, told the spirit that she wants to, um, help. And, well, when Pandora found out about having escaped, well, um, she does use a device to turn into Herapira, however, it didn't work, it was revealed that Dr. Bio, he uses, um, he made sure it won't work anymore, and Bandora was upset. In the next episode, Heron, he, she told Sue Spirit about that, um, she wants to help fight, uh, hold on, alright, I'm back, now, um, in one episode, we are introduced to another villain. His name is Yoki. And he's supposed to be some kind of like a ghost spirit. And now, uh, Kyojin Gote, he didn't trust Yoki and um, believed that Yoki was gonna um, observe Bandora and um, try to take over the Wara Tikuku. No, I don't know if it's the same episode or another one, but um, it is revealed that the Grand Nazca has a um, another mode called a um, some kind of battle formation where um, it turns into some kind of a um, robot, yeah, a giant robot, and superior band, you know, or use the Grand Nazca um, and that form to um, fight the enemies. I mean, he will also use the cannon formation as well, you know. But anyway, um, see ya. Eventually, um, it was revealed that, uh, oh yeah, I forgot to mention that, um, Yoki, he turned Ricky into some kind of throne. And um, as for the two other women, uh, yes, uh, Kasha and Shadow. Um, 
I forgot what it was that happened to them, but um, shortly after what happened to Ricky, well, they weren't seen or heard from ever again for the rest of the series. Now, um, eventually, um, Kyojin Kote's suspicion was right, and uh, Yoki was trying to uh, take over, but uh, of course, um, it's revealed that uh, Pandora knew all along, and eventually, um, she, I think it was, it was her or me, she decided, but anyway, Yoki was destroyed, and well, that only leaves um, Pandora to zero W Bio and Kyojin Gote. Now, um, Kyojin Gote, he, um, he left, um, uh, Pandora, uh, um, the imp, well, um, he left to, um, find a way to defeat the spirit band, so, the only left Pandora, Diso Zero, and Dr. Bio. Well, the fact that I mentioned that, um, eventually, uh, I don't know, I think not yet, um, well, before that, um, well, Bandora, she, um, decided to give this Zero Shogun an upgrade by, um, well, she offered to put some kind of a device inside him, and, well, um, she took off this Zero's head off, and put some kind of device inside, and then put the head back up again. And this is zero. Went up to fight Superman. It was revealed that the power up was supposed to be some kind of explosive to uh, not only destroy this is zero Shogun, but also Spearman along with him. And eventually, well, um, this is zero was, was destroyed, but. Superman, he uh, got out of the way. Not just in time. No, um. So, Top Top Bio was the only one left along with the uh, King Grounds. And let's see, um. Oh, yes, I remember that, um. After a while, um. Pandora, she decided to give Dr. Bio another chance, and um, she finally got his robotic form back, and um, of course, Dr. Bio was planning to use his, um, his new chance to try to um, put an end to water. He has to be careful so he can succeed. Now, let's see. Um, oh, no, uh, Kyoshin Kote, he uh, appeared inside the Grand Nazca and um, but he appeared as some like a as a ghost because he was so, in some kind of um other dimension and he was trying to um cause trouble. Of course, um, it failed. Oh, another thing uh, that I should mention that um, as we get closer to the end of the series. It is revealed that um well uh, the war of deity was just an illusion created uh by Pandora. Oh and I forgot to mention that throughout the entire series, well um Pandora she needed clean water and then uh came uh, a battle with um between her and Superman, along the thing also with Diana and Heron, and um, they uh, fought and then um, revealed that Pandora was some kind of alien starfish, which explained why she needed uh, water a lot. Eventually, uh, Pandora she arrived in her fortress, and uh, the heroes followed and. Uh, Dr. Bio was there and uh, eventually he turned back into Ben Hakase, you know, in his human form. 
of course, uh, he uh, well, he didn't have much time to live, and um, he used his um, well, something he created to um, help destroy Pandora, and uh, the fortress crashed down. Oh, and I forgot to mention that um, the Grand Nazca also um, crashed down. You know, um, soon before that, and. Uh, Yes, sir. Hmm. And, um, of course, uh, and then, uh, something happened with, uh, that resulted in, um, Diana, Spiribat, and Heron being transported somewhere else, and what they, what they saw, when they arrived, well, um, a friend that was the city they grew up in, well, it's, uh, they remember as children, meaning that they came back to Korean. And also they found that um, the War of Fortress uh, underground as well. Okay, um, because, well, um, if the Fortress that revealing that, um, the world they um, knew as children was Earth the whole time, but in the future. And also because of, you know, of the events of the past, or at least um, was the past to them, well, the war empire never existed, and um, resulting in their families being um, still around. And the series ended with a um, glitch from what happened throughout, you know, the entire show. And that was the end of Yiku Senji Superbond. Now, there are probably some things I left out, but um, I did the best I. Uh, well, I did the best uh, to remember a lot of the important stuff. And, um, oh, and um, was interesting about this series well um this was one of the series that was adapted into Sabant via troopers with jp reese in the superb armor and caitlin star and the the you know lady armor also the Yana heron armor and uh, i mean heron lady lady armor and uh, yes well um uh, as for what i think about uh the series uh, the Suspiro Band series that is. Yes, um, it, it was alright. I also ended up having a crush on Heron because of how beautiful she is. And uh, I forgot to mention that the actress who plays Heron is the same actress who played Annie and Uchi Keshi Shida. Yeah, so, and, uh, yeah, she was beautiful in that series, but uh, it's amazing that she became more beautiful two years afterwards. Now, uh, as for if uh, somebody was shown to watch the series, well, uh, I'm, I didn't try to recall anything, but, um, well, because I wasn't able to um, review this series, you know, um, as soon as I wanted to, well, then um, I have trouble re remembering, but, um, if you are a parent, then uh, it's basically, well, uh, you should watch this entire series yourself and then you can uh, decide whether to let your children watch it or not. It's up to you. So, yes, I think that's all I can say about Jiku Senji Superior Band in this video. And also, uh, please subscribe to my channel. Oh, yeah, I forgot to mention, yes, also um, the whole King of Drone calling Skugs and. Um, the whole virtual reality thing I mentioned earlier in the video, in my review, well, yes, the VR droopers thing uh, explains it. So anyway, um, yes, like I said before, please subscribe to my channel because it will help me a lot. And also, please share this video on social media like Facebook, Twitter, or whatever. So that's it, and I'll see you next time. Bye.